Hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. Hope you're all well. Thanks for joining the channel. Today I have an unboxing. So I'll tell you a little story behind this one. Uh, one of my viewers contacted me. His name is Mark. He lives out in Wisconsin. And uh, Mark's in a really advantageous position where he, um, he's he got, I think him and his buddy, they have access to uh, electronics recycling. And they get all kinds of audio gear in from this uh, re electronics recycling I don't know if it's a state-run program or what it is, but they between the, him and his friend, they'd get all this uh, old vintage audio gear. And I think from what he told me, his friend just up and resells the stuff that works. And then the stuff that doesn't work uh, goes up to Mark. And Mark gets to uh, tinker with it and see if he can fix it and uh, get things going again. And uh, he contacted me. He says, hey, I look, I have a whole... I got mountains of this stuff sitting here. How I should send some of it to you. And I said, yeah, okay. So we exchanged emails back and forth and we decided that we're gonna, he's gonna send me a receiver. There's a vintage receiver in here. I haven't seen it yet, but um, we're gonna open it up together. And uh, so he, he sent this to me. He didn't sell it to me. He sent it to me out of the kindness of his heart. I paid for the shipping and he, uh, he of course uh, had to package it up and ship it out. So it was very generous of him. And uh, so here we go. We're going to open this. Now this looks like it was already opened by the Canada Service, uh, Canada Border Services Agency. It looks like the big yellow tape here. So the customs guys were in it. I wonder what they found. I don't know. He said he was going to package some other stuff in it with, it with it too. So let's see what we got here. Alrighty, I see the bottom of it. So let's lift this up. It's heavy. It is heavy. It's bigger than I thought it would be. Okay, so here's the front of it. big reveal here it is ta-da it's a 720 Harman Kardon it's bigger than I thought it was going to be it's actually it's fairly nice shape it's just very dirty now he sent this to me uh, this was in his pile of stuff that doesn't work uh, HK 720 stereo receiver do not turn on this power supply works but sometimes it's shorted will will start and will start to smoke uh, yeah and he provided a little bit of documentation for it too so we're gonna have a, a repair video on this one we're gonna get it going gonna clean it up oh cool it looks like it's in fairly good shape let's see Roll it around back. And the back looks a lot like my SR600. It's got the output devices and the covers for them. Um, I don't see an antenna. I don't know if this had an external antenna. A little bit beat up here, but it's actually really nice shape. So thank you, Mark. This one's going to make a nice video, I think. Get it going. I have a feeling I already know what's wrong with it, if it's making smoke. So we'll get to, into that in a bit here. Let's have a look. He said he included some other stuff in the box. Let's have a look. See what he had. Holy smokes. All right, Mark said he had 
lots of extra stuff that he didn't have any use for. So this is this is insulated sleeving that you can use on leads. It looks like it might be Teflon too. That's nice. That's nice. Thank you. Some heat shrink tubing. About a mile of it. That's always handy. What is this stuff? More shrink tubing. It's clear. Yeah, that's good. Look at that. Holy smokes. Thank you, Mark. I'm going to have heat shrink tubing for the rest of my life now. Uh, here's a power cord that uh, has the plug on the end. Six foot power cord. Six foot power cord. Brand new. Those are good. These are good for, you know, different... Uh, Check out these uh, ring connectors. Whole pile of them. You know, I'm always looking for these this size too, and 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 here it is. It's right on. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Either I get them too small or too big, but these are the right right ones I like to use. Here's a USB cable. And a power cord. There's three of them. Right on. What else we got here? That's paper. And then we have some resistors. 0.47 ohms, 10%. 10 of them, right on. Well, thank you, Mark. I love, love that, getting extra trinkets like that. That stuff will become in good use. So I'm gonna get to clean this up and get this put away. And then we can get started on the receiver. Okay, here it is on the bench. This is the 720. They also made a 520, I believe, and there was a few others, a 230 and uh, a 320, a 330, I think. I can't remember all the model numbers that they had, but this is the knock, knock, what do they call this, Nocturne? This uh, line of um, receivers uh, featured black face with blacked out glass that only lit up once you powered it up. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fairly dated unit. I think it's probably, uh, I'm guessing mid sixties. And I had a little peek inside already and it looks a hell of a lot like my SR 600 that I did not too long ago. So let's look at this. It has power button here. Um, orange transparent power. I'm assuming that illuminates. We have our mode switch with Phono 1, Phono 2, FM Mono, FM Stereomatic, they call it Stereomatic, and uh, and then tape recorder, auxiliary. Volume control, bass and treble for A channel, bass and treble for a B channel, just like the SR600. I don't understand why they wanted to do that, but anyways, contour, in and out, tape monitor out, low cut out, I cut out, tone controls out. Oh, you can turn the tone controls off. That's a good feature. These switches feel very, very old and need a good cleaning. FM muting, so when they're all pushed down, everything's out. Balance control, that spins, but uh, um, for some reason it has a pullout switch. Odd. And uh, speakers. So we have our phones, which is speakers off. System one, system one and two, and then system two. And then our phone up with our tuning knob. All right, lid coming off. And uh, lots of cobwebs, dead bugs, lint, dirt. It's very dirty. Very dirty on the inside too. I noticed it was a lot of um, cobwebs and stuff on the inside. It's going to need a good dusting. A lot of hair inside here. Uh, so looking at this, it looks identical to my SR600. There's a power supply section here with caps, rectifier diodes. There's a bridge rectifier, transformer, power transformer, and then we have 
um, our two circuits for our two power amplifiers. These are our drivers. One thing it doesn't have, it doesn't have those goofy little printed circuit boards on the tone circuit. So maybe they're on the other side. I don't see them here. This is all point to point wiring. Everything looks original with the exception of, let's see here. Somebody's been in here doing some fixing. Turn it around, it is quite heavy. It is a heavy receiver, a lot of steel chassis. So somebody replaced this bulb and they just tacked wires onto a bulb and then they stuck it in some paper here. It's not really the right way to do it, but it worked for them, I guess. Well, when the wires break off. Okay, so a tuning capacitor. It has only, is this FM only? Yeah, it doesn't have AM. FM only. Dial strings all good. Electrolytics are all original. Um, it's going to need a full recap. It's got some vintage transistors in it, that's for sure. Looks like somebody might have changed a couple of rectifier diodes too. These don't look uh, original. Just for... Uh, let's just try this quick. That's okay. It should be alright. I think the diodes are okay. Power supply might be alright. Here's the back. We have our output devices, speaker outputs on this side, antenna for FM, muting adjust, courtesy outlets. And there's two speaker fuses, one for each channel. That one's intact, two and a half amp. That one's intact. And then on this side we have all our inputs. Looks identical almost to the SR600. Looks like we got an aluminum bottom. Save weight. And here's the rest of the circuit. Now, when he said it smokes, I was thinking, I was envisioning these two transformers, one of these two transformers being uh, cooked like it was in the other receiver I had. And these ones actually look okay. I don't see anything that looked like they overheated. But I do see two resistors that are crispy uh, crispy fried here. One's a point, or a two, two point, sorry. It's a point two seven and another point two seven here. Red, violet, silver, silver. And I think that is 0.27, or maybe 2.7. And anyways, in these cobwebs, there's two burnt resistors. So that's going to be our smoke channel. These output devices are probably fried. And uh, if that's the case, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to do a conversion to silicon transistors from germanium. And uh, I want to do that and uh, get this one going. I'm curious as, as to how it sounds with uh, after the conversion. So we're going to play with that. There's actually a little transistor here. Is that a trans two two wire device here and a two wire device here? I don't know what those are. It looks like a germanium transistor, but it's actually just got two wires. So that's probably a diode of some kind. And cobwebs. I gotta blow the dust out of this thing. So if that's our smoking issue, that's that's easy. That's that's uh, that's nice. I like to see that. That's actually a, a good thing because I was scared these were gone. Okay, let's uh, get started. Power supply at first, I think. Okay, so here's a look at the cooked resistors in the power amplifier. This is a 
0.27 ohms, this one here, and this one under here. Can't see it very well, it's in the shadow. This one. So I have a feeling this transistor or this transistor or both are probably have a hard short on them. So let's get our meter out and test these transistors first. Base to emitter. I have a short. Let's see if I can get this to cooperate. It doesn't show a hard short, it shows something shorted. If it was a hard short on a transistor, it'd read 001, but it's reading 004. So I'm wondering if it's something reading through one of these resistors, maybe. See, that's even less if I go to the other side of that resistor. So let's go to the collector. Same thing, 004. If I read on the other side of that, it's even less. So maybe that transistor's okay. This one here, let's go from base to emitter. Okay, we got normal junction there, normal junction there. Let's go reverse. There's no hard shorts on that transistor. Let's pull this one out and test it out of the circuit. RCA devices. Yeah, that's shorted for sure. And so is that. And that's a hard short right there. Okay, this transistor's done. Yes, sir. Let's take the other one out and try it. That one should be okay. No, oh, hard short. Collector to emitter. This one's bad too. Should be fairly easy to fix. What I'm going to do is I'm going to retrofit this for silicon, which means I'm going to have to remove some resistors here and replace them with different values just to set up the biasing different for uh, silicon as opposed to germanium. So, uh, well, let me, let me get a schematic for this thing and then we'll start on that. But first, I want to hook this up and see if the remainder of it works. I think we do have a working amplifier here on the, on the one channel. So, let's plug it in and try it out. Okay, fire in the hole. Here we go. Woo, that was not cool. Lots of sparks and flames. Okay. Oh, <coughs> man, I got a good whiff of that. So we got two more blown resistors here. On this channel, which means both channels are out now. So, do the germanium transistors just die from age? Because uh, this is plugged in, this channel blew, this one obviously didn't. Remove the transistor silicon from this one. Uh, yeah, now this is gone. That's interesting. Now, I'm sure my friend Mark plugged this in and tried it out, or somebody did, because they have the. Um, they have the uh, the note saying that there was uh, smoke. <coughs> wow, <coughs> that's nasty stuff. Um, yeah, I should have probably should have checked this these this bridge rectifier first. Maybe we're pumping AC onto it or something, something ridiculous like that. So let me get my ohmmeter out here and we'll check a few things. Uh, it's not plugged in. Good. Let's check this. Maybe we have 
AC going into the not shorted. Neither is that one. Or that one. Or that one. So yeah, it's the only thing that can fail is the bridge rectifier and then the uh, power transistors. Let's pull those transistors out and test them. Oops. That's good that way. And that's, yeah, that's. Nope. That one's done as well. I totally didn't expect that to happen. That is. That's something else. Well, that makes our decision to go to silicone even that much easier. Okay, just a little update on what I'm doing here. I removed the four destroyed uh, emitter resistors. These are 0.27 at 2 watt, and they all blew up. So, they're gone. Um, I also removed these four diodes. I was trying to get a read on these with my uh, little Chinese uh, parts tester, this thing here. And it doesn't even show up on the screen. It always shows up as something bad, or resistors, or whatever. So I took my good old trusty diode check function on my, my digital multimeter. And these are actually still good. These four diodes are germanium uh, diodes, and they have a forward current, or forward voltage drop of 0 0.19, or 0 0.19 uh, to uh, 0.17 to 0.19 volts. So those are good. I was wondering why do they use these germanium uh, and I was looking for data sheets on this and I can't find any. I found some similar ones and they have a very low forward current of uh, about 100 milliamps or so 200 max, 200 milliamps max. I don't know what those diodes are doing in the circuit but anyways. So my plan is replace the 0.27s with 0.2s, this is all I have in stock right now, and uh, I'm going to order the proper resistors, but these are going to go in for testing and evaluation. So I'll put these four in, and my plan is to use four of these RCA transistors. These are silicon, and uh, these are NPNs. Now you're probably wondering, well, hi, wait a second, you can't put an NPN transistor in a PMP circuit. Well, yeah, you can. Um, all you got to do really is just reverse the voltages here and put your NPNs in place. Reverse these two diodes and everything should work. Um, it's just everything will be inverted and working uh, opposite of what this is working. So we're going to, that's what my plan is. NPN transistors, uh, 0.2 ohm resistors, and I'll probably replace these two diodes with some silicon. Um, 1N 4004s or something like 4007s or whatever I have around here. I got lots of lots of uh, of the silicon diodes, and then we're going to get to the point of where we need to make our adjustments for our biasing because right now it's biased for 0.3 volts, and we need to change this resistor and this resistor to bring that up to 0.6. So we're going to have to do something there. Either we raise this one or lower this one. I don't like lowering this one because it increases the current. And um, so what we'll do is we'll figure out, we might have to do a combination of both, but we'll see. We'll get to that stage when we get it running. So whoever replaced these two diodes didn't even solder this diode. It was wrapped around like this, but it was soldered, big blob on top. But I just actually peeled this away with a screwdriver without desoldering it. So I don't know if it made connection or not. I'm just getting, uh, I'm removing these power wires here. This is the positive and this one here is the negative. These go to, these are the power feeds to the amplifier. I'm going to remove them so I can uh, inject power into it. But uh, some of these, but so much build up on these. This one here is not the greatest either, but at least it's soldered. I can see. 
Let me unwrap this one as well. There, that one was that one was stuck down. But this one here, this is what I'm trying to get out. Is this purple wire? If I can do this, I'll be happy. And when they uh, cut the old diodes out, they didn't remove the little stubs. They just left them. See, there's one. And there should be another one here. That's the danger of just wrapping wire around the lug and soldering it. it if you don't get enough heat to uh, penetrate in, into the joint, it's not going to stick. I'll try and get this out. This nonsense here. There, I think I got it now. Now I can get this wire out, maybe. There we go. That's what I want. All right, so I'm gonna do one channel at a time here. So I got both of my NPN transistors installed and they're bolted down. I have the two emitter resistors installed and I have the two diodes installed in reverse to what it says in the schematic. So we're going to test this circuit first. Uh, what I have is I have my power supply connected to the power feed for the amplifier and that's reversed. The purple wire should be positive but now it's negative and the gray wire is your positive now. So I'm going to turn on the power supply and we're going to see how the current goes. If the current goes sky high then we know something's wrong but we're gonna ramp up the voltage until uh, we get up to probably about 50 volts. And that's the normal operating voltage for this amplifier. So let's uh, do that now. Okay, start turning up the uh, so your current here on the left, voltage on the right. Six volts. 10. So we're at 100 milliamps at 20 volts, dissipating 2 watts, and that's probably through the resistors. If I touch the resistors, I can feel which ones are warm. So far no shorts, let's keep turning it up. So this is half of the operating voltage and we are at almost 200 milliamps. That seems high. 5 watts dissipated. Well, maybe not. That could be okay. Let's keep going. Okay, we're at 10 watts dissipated. 30, 300 milliamps, 33 volts. I just want to feel around where this 10 watts is going. I have the other channel completely disconnected, so it shouldn't be drawing any current. It must be going into the transistors because resistors aren't getting hot enough to 
say 10 watts. 10 watts is a lot of heat. Now there's some heat there. I'm just checking the 330 ohm resistors. They're a little warm. But the emitter resistors are not. Okay, let's keep going. We're at 40 volts, 15 watts. That seems excessive. The plate's staying pretty cool. Let's do some tests, voltage tests. Alright, so what's our base emitter voltage here on this transistor? Let's test this one. 0.6. Okay. And on this one? 0.57. I'm just wondering. I want to check. Just checking the uh, transformer windings. I did check the transformers and they were fine. They have no shorts, no opens, so they seem to be okay. Okay, I did the math. There's uh, 400 milliamps going through these emitter resistors. 400 milliamps. Uh, when I turn this power supply up to 50 volts, which is full line voltage. I'm getting uh, 480, 490 milliamps through the entire thing. So we're putting about 400 milliamps through the 405 milliamps through these uh, emitter resistors and transistors, and the other 80 milliamps or so is going through these resistors here. Now. I think the problem is I changed this from a 0.27 to a 0.20, which lowered the resistance, which increases current flow. I'm going to change this from a 0.2. I have some 0.33s. I'm going to try a 0.33 in, in this position here. And we'll change these out for 0.33s. I don't have any 0.27s. That's the, what I, my problem is right now. So. Uh, I'm going to experiment with different values and see where the current goes. It's probably going to go down. That's what I'm expecting. All right, swapped out the two 0.2 resistors, ohm resistors for 0.33 ohm. And we're going to watch the current go up down this time. Let's just go up here and start ramping up the voltage and see what kind of current we're going to get. We're at 25 volts, which is half the supply, and we're only at 45 milliamps, which is really good. Let's take it right up to 50. Fifty volts, hundred milliamps. That's awesome. Let's measure our uh, biasing on our transistors. They might be a bit low. Might have to turn that up. All right. So, base to emitter, we got 0.57, base to emitter, this one's only 3.383, why the difference? We got a resistor in here that's really out of tolerance maybe, let's try that again, 0.383. Now we're up around 16 watts. What's going on here? Something is not stable. So 
17 watts. Something seems... Oh, maybe it's this resistor here. When I push on it, current changes. What about this one? That one's okay. We got a bad resistor here. When I press on this, it drops to 100 milliamps. When I let go, it's 350 milliamps. Something is not right. So we have a problem here. The problem is these original resistors are all baked. So for example, this one's supposed to be 27 ohms and it's bringing back at 37 ohms. This one here is 27. This one's at 31. It's supposed to be 330. Well, that one's not bad, it's 335. 36. What about this one here? That one's 330. This one here. It's hard to tell with them in circuit. I think I'm going to have to replace all these resistors. 330 ohms, four of them. And these 27 ohms are out to lunch. So let me go and do that. All right, so what am I trying to accomplish here? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this amplifier to balance out. What I have right now is I have, uh, here, I'll show you. I redrew the schematic to show you what it is now. So we have NPN transistors here and here. Now we reverse the polarity of the power supply as well. And we reverse the polarity of these two diodes. So in essence, this is actually the same circuit, it's just everything's been flipped upside down. Another change I've made is I made 0.33 ohms here uh, instead of 0.27. And I think that helps a little bit with uh, stability. Now, the problem I'm having right now is I can power this up with plus minus 12 volts. And I'm getting nice current draw and I'm getting dissipation of about 3, 3.5 to 4 watts for the entire thing. Yeah, sitting at idle, of course. But once I jack that up to plus or minus 25 volts, this climbs to 18 watts, which is, in my eyes, that's excessive. There's too much heat being drawn by these transistors. Uh, they're turned on too hard. And my objective is to turn down the bias of these transistors so that power consumption drops. Ideally, I want this under right around 5 watts, maybe, or somewhere in that area. If I could get 3.5 to 4 at half voltage, I'd be happy with 7 watts at full voltage. You know what I mean? Okay. So, one of the problems I faced when I started all this was all these resistors are carbon comps, and they are all super drifty. Like, when I put uh, current through this voltage to the circuit, these 330s would heat up and they would change in value. They would actually go higher in value. Or no, they, I can't remember. And these ones drift as well. These these are carbon comps, these two 27 ohm resistors. Um, these ones are, right now they're 5 watt cement resistors, so they're stable and they're not changing with, uh, with load. So, Essentially, we have two voltage dividers here. We have one here, and we have another here. And the difference between these two is what's causing instability. Now, when we power this up, we want the output to be zero volts, ideally. And right now, I'm not getting that. I'm getting an offset on one on one transistor. One transistor is conducting a lot harder than the other. So if I put 12 and 12 volts here, I'm getting something like nine volts across this transistor and the remainder, which would be uh, 18 volts or something on this one. So that's the problem I'm having right now. What I did is on this one that's conducting harder, is I installed 
uh, another resistor. It's actually a trim pot. And I made it a 500 ohm. My pencil's giving me troubles today. 500 ohm. Now what I can do is I can dial this down and as I decrease this resistance by increasing this um, resistor, potentiometer, increasing the, decreasing the resistance brings this down. Um, this comes into balance. This was at uh, 12 volts here and 12 volts here. 12.5 actually. 12.5 and 12.5. And that's on my test voltages. So that's good. Problem is when I crank it up to full line voltage and I plus and minus 25 volts across here, uh, I'm still getting 18 watts or so. So decreasing this resistance reduces bias. Now, as an effect, increasing this resistance should also reduce bias because this is a ratio of this. If that makes sense. And I had this down to 15 ohms. And that's where it was happy. And I left this one at 27. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust both of these down to 15 ohms. And I'm going to see how the current consumption drops across this whole circuit. Um, I might have to raise this to a 390. And I'll see how that goes. And uh, we'll, But right now I'm just trying to fine tune this so that it works. Um, that's at an idle on DC state. Now when you start adding a signal, you start getting AC on here and AC on here coming out of the transformers and that's going to conduct this transistor on for half the cycle and this transistor on for the other half of the cycle. So that's where we get our AC output. That should all be working normally as long as we have a balanced uh, idle circuit here. So I'm going to continue playing around. I'm going to change these two resistors to 15 ohms and I'm going to see how it balances out and then I'm going to change probably these to 390s and we'll see how that works as well. Eventually we'll figure out what the magic combination is. Now I can do this with uh, trimmer resistors. I can add trimmers across here and play around with the values and see in real time how it affects the uh, current draw. Okay, so excuse the mess here. This is just, everything's just tacked in place temporary just so I can get a, a reading on something. I removed both transistors. So all we have in circuit here is the resistors and the diodes. Now, I'm still getting an imbalance between um, one transistor and the other. And, and I know the reason now because it's these diodes I picked, they're not identical. They actually have different forward voltages. Let's measure this one. This one's uh, 0.629, and I'll measure the other one, 0.767. So I need to get a matched, well not matched, but I need to get a better matched pair of diodes here. And then this circuit will start behaving better. Now, um, this is what shows on the power supply. So that's what I'm giving it, I'm giving it 50.4 volts across the entire circuit. It's drawing 64 milliamps and consumption by those resistors is 3.2 watts. That's all good. Now when I put this uh, transistors back in, the current goes up quite a bit and the co power consumption goes up to about 12, 12 watts, somewhere around there. So I need to get this balanced. So I'm going to change these two diodes so that they're better matched and then we're going to try the circuit again. I'm pretty much there now with all my values. I have 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 15, 15, 390, 390. Um, and that seems to have a nice balanced, um, not overly high current consumption, but it should work. Okay, so what I did is I wired both amplifiers the same with the same value resistors. Um, so everything's good here. Got my, uh, I got the uh, diodes in place and everything. And I've got it powered up right now with 51 volts. And this is what the power supply shows. 
So you can see we're drawing 127 milliamps and 6.5 watts approximately. That's with no transistors in the circuit. So that's just purely resistive load right there, the, res the, the divider networks. Um, so we're going to install both sets of transistors. We're going to see how this plays out. Okay, so I got all four transistors installed, they're torqued down, heat sink compound, everything's good to go. Two things you're going to notice, two things you need to pay attention to. These screws, when you tighten them down, you got to make sure that they don't stab into one of your resistors you recently just placed. So you got to make sure there's no short circuit in the back here from these screws. And then you need to check continuity between the chassis and the device to make sure there's no shorts. Okay, all four are good. So we are good to put some power to this. What I'm going to do is add 50 volts to the power supply wires and we're going to see how much current this thing draws. Um, typically it was drawing uh, somewhere around 3 watts per channel with no transistors so when I add the transistors I'm expecting another 8 to 10 watts per channel so we should see about 25 watts total consumption I'm guessing so let's try it out. Alright here we go Take it up to 25 volts first. We're not getting much conduction at all. Let's take it all the way. And once you hit that 40 volt mark, it starts really sucking current. Let's take it right up to 50 volts. 25 watts, kind of what I predicted. Half an amp. We'll let this go for a while and we'll let it see how it warms up. 25 watts is a fair amount of heat, but this back plate should dissipate all of it. So it looks like our amplifiers are on and biased. We'll have to see how they're biased. Really, there's a lack of service information on these amplifiers, this type of amplifier and these old receivers. Now, if I knew what idling current should be and all that, um, I could adjust those resistors to be bang on, but I'm just working blind here. So, 26 watts, 27 watts, it's going to climb up as it warms up too. It's slowly going to get a little higher. So far everything's staying fairly cool. Those transistors are heat sunk pretty good. Everything's cool. Just want to make sure all our resistors are getting warm equally in the air. So I'm just going to let this go for a while. And uh, I think the next test is to be connect it up to the internal power supply and see if we can um, pass a signal through it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove my bench supply and I'm going to connect it back up to the internal power supply but I'm going to first tack everything back together here. I had things disconnected and we're going to power this thing up for the first time to see how how it performs. We won't know until we put power to it and uh, see how it stands on its own. So let me doctor this up. I'll get this cleaned up here. I did measure these capacitors. Uh, they're down, or it was supposed to be 3,000 microfarad. There's a negative one here and a positive one here for the two rails. Um, they're supposed to be 3,000, and one measures around 2,000. The other one, um, this one, I couldn't get a reading on it because there's resistors and stuff in the way. So, it's this whole thing is going to be recapped anyway when I'm done. So, I just want to get uh, get it working first with the amplifier, and then after that we'll move on to other things. But let's start with this. All right, here we go. First power up. Let's see what it does. That didn't sound good. Oh, 
wondering how much DC we are getting on our our speakers. Let's try. Okay, we got system one. Balance is set for zero. One, two, FM. I'm getting some DC on the speakers. Oh, it is working. Interesting. We're consuming 39 watts. That's an awful lot. I'm going to uh, check for DC on the speakers. Shut this off for now. Let me turn it around. We'll get a voltmeter out. I hope you can see that voltmeter. So this channel here, I've got to be careful I put my arm. This one has uh, six tenths of a volt, which is high. This one here is down around 130 millivolts. It's a lot better. So we're going to have to do some adjustments on those transistors, on the um, biasing of those transistors. And I have a good idea what we're going to do, but it's working for now. It's actually working. Not bad. That's full volume. Full volume. Okay, what I can do is I can adjust the value of these resistors. Uh, these are 15 ohms right now, but I can shunt this with a, a potentiometer and I can adjust it down from 15 ohms down to let's say 10. And that brings the receiver back in balance. That's full volume right there. But anyways, I want to show you how adjusting this will get rid of our balance. So here's a voltmeter on our output for this channel. And I got 680 millivolts. Now if I adjust this, I can bring it down to zero. Right there, zero millivolts. So there's now no DC on that. A little DC on the other one, 100 millivolts or so. But I can adjust that out too. And my power consumption actually went down from 38 watts to 36 watts. Terribly inefficient. Okay, I'm wired in with an 8 ohm load. I want to see, not I'm not looking for how much power it produces, I'm looking to see what kind of waveform it produces. I have a feeling I have a lot of problems still in these, in these circuits. Up front here, like all the tone circuits and the drivers for these amplifiers. I don't think the amplifiers are actually set up properly either. So there's a lot of that going on. I did balance out that one that was really out of uh, DC balance and now I have 
about zero millivolts on that one channel. But uh, we're going to check um, waveform here. So let's power this up. I got a, a thousand hertz tone, eight ohm load, and we should be all good to go. Let's turn it on. Let's plug it in first because I didn't want to get shocked when I was moving it around. Okay, so let's turn this on again. You can see we have, looks like we got a hum. Yeah, we got a lot of hum on our things. So let's turn up the, a lot of power supply hum. That might go away when we start fixing capacitors. Okay, so let's uh, look at the sine wave. And I don't have any knobs here, so I don't know how balanced this is. Probably right there somewhere. Let's turn it up. So far it's behaving. Okay. Oh, okay, there we go. It's an ugly clipping there. One channel clips a lot quicker than the other. So let's get a reading on the bottom channel right about here. It's kind of a sine wave, I think. So that needs to go connect up my voltmeter. And we're only getting 1.1 volts RMS. So that's not very much power. Considering how much power we're wasting or sucking in with these heat sink getting warm. So 1.1 volts RMS. Now, like I said, I still have problems here, I think, in these driver circuits, uh, in the tone circuit. So we're going to have to do some more work here. That's full volume. It looks promising. I'll bet you if I waveformed, let's see, this one here, I don't know which one is which. Let's scope, let's scope the output of the driver circuit real quick and we'll have a look at what that looks like. I have a feeling it's going to be all distortion too. So let me pull my probes out. So I moved my probes to onto this line collector of the output of the driver into the transformer. Let's see what kind of signal we're getting here. Let's turn this on. And I think I need to turn my thing off DC. Okay, here we go. Turning up the volume. Yeah, see how weak that is? And that's all distorted on the top trace. That is problems uh, towards the beginning of the circuits. So the amplifier might be just amplifying what it's seeing and working fine. Um, Let's see, let's turn this up a little. And get a good look at this stuff. That's on 500 millivolts of division, so that's about one volt peak to peak. I think that's low. I think we're actually probably really low on that voltage. We should be a lot higher. So we might be missing a power supply voltage here or a low power supply voltage. We might have uh, big problems here in this in this thing that we don't know about yet. So I think we accomplished 
the most important part, we got the power amplifier working again and we used just garden variety NPN transistors instead of the silicon or germanium PMPs and I think that's a good uh, exercise in doing the conversion. All right, so what did that test show us? I think everything here is working great right now, to be honest. Uh, we focused on this circuit alone and we got this to the point where it is going to work. We know that. But I think one of the main uh, things is getting these values right. 390 ohms might be a little too low. I could probably, I don't know, 470 seems like quite a jump. What's the next value in between? Uh, yeah, there really is no value in between 390 and 470. That might be too much of a stretch. Now, these 15 ohm resistors, these could also, I'm beginning to think these could even be 12 ohms or 10 ohms if you really want to get radical with this. But I'm going to leave these at 15 for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install trimmers on all all of these resistors, all these 15 ohm resistors, and these are going to be 100 ohm. And with these trimmers on each transistor, I'll be able to control the bias individually for each transistor. And I'll be able to fine tune this to be balanced perfectly for zero volts, which is what we want. We don't want any DC on our output. Um, but uh, yeah, I think this is the way to do it. Um, these diodes, I'm not convinced entirely of them, what they do or, or uh, what, what value they hold in this circuit. Because I've seen the same circuit without these diodes. And it seems like maybe on the higher power amplifiers, they like putting them in here and just maybe help with stability. I don't know. I'm not an expert on amplifiers. So, but, so this is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take, uh, we've got everything set here. I've got a bunch of trim pots. And I'm going to take four of them and I'm going to get one for each transistor. And we're going to uh, install those. The problem, the main problem with this is mounting and uh, whatnot. I don't have any real good place to mount these trim pots. There's no printed circuit board. Um, these are meant for printed circuit boards, but they're, uh, they're pretty flimsy and fragile. I don't want to have them floating out in the air because they'll might get broken off. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe there's these clips here. Let me get this out of the way. There's these clips here. They look like fuse holders, but they are uh, actually they were holding the germanium transistor. I probably could fit one in here, and it would. Yeah, it's actually snug and uh, it'll hold it. You can even put a dab of adhesive. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep these. I'm going to attach leads, a couple of leads on each one, and I'm going to preset these to 100 ohms. And uh, we'll install those on one on each of the 15 ohm resistors. And that'll shunt current down to bias the transistors. Now, if you measure the voltage across this 15 ohm resistor, it's only about 600 millivolts or so. So there's not a lot of voltage there and not a lot of current either. Uh, 15 ohms with about 600 millivolts is about uh, 40 milliamps, I think I calculated. I can't remember. Let me try this one more time. Yeah, 40, 40 milliamps across those 15 ohm resistors. So with these, they're going to probably be adjusted to about the value of this one was. And this one here, I think is about 26 ohms. Let me measure its resistance quick here and I'll know. I have to do make sure that we're not exceeding the current capability of these little trim pots. So what do we got here? We got... Uh, That's not right. It's all over the place. 39, 39 ohms. So if I redo the big the calculations, uh, 0.6 divided by 39. So we're doing about 15 milliamps through each of these little uh, little guys. I think that should be 
they should be able to handle 50 milliamps. I'll check the data sheet for these to make sure that they're not going to be exceeded. These are 10 turns, so I don't expect them to be high power devices. All right, so I'll get started on that. All right, there they are. They're installed. I got four trim pots and they are all installed across the 15 ohm resistors. So with this, I'll be able to dial these amplifiers in um, perfectly. Uh, this is gonna give me a good range of adjustment and I think this is a good idea here. I don't know how they do it on the factory line with, with stock parts and 10% resistors because this is so finicky and it needs to be balanced to work properly and to be um, set up. And uh, I don't know how they did it with, with uh, stock parts. Part of the problem I experienced when I first started this was these carbon comp resistors, like these ones here, uh, they're so drifty, as soon as they you put any current through them, they heat up and they, their value changes. So, really difficult to work with this, get it to work. So, and then here's another one. I removed them all and uh, went with some more stable resistors. Okay, you're probably wondering why wouldn't I just go with PNP transistors instead of doing the conversion to NPN. Um, it was simple really because I have a lot of NPN transistors here uh, in stock and I had ample supply to match and uh, I could match pairs for the two channels. Whereas the PNP I only have a, a, f a small handful and I didn't have very many, um, I didn't have a set of four obviously. And there was no, uh, there's, I do have transistors that I could have used. Yeah, I do have transistors that I buy in bulk, but these are more reserved for customer repairs. Um, so I wanted to stay away from using um, expensive parts and use up some of my supply of vintage transistors. So that's all good. Now, I'm not going to bounce this today. I'm going to end this video here because I think we went on over an hour now. And uh, in a roundabout way, we did a conversion. And... Uh, I think it's a success. I'm, I'm happy with this. So what we need to do next on the next uh, episode of this is we need to get the amplifiers working properly, which means we have to go through the driver circuits and make sure those are working. The tone circuits, uh, I think we still have some open caps here. Definitely have um, one channel working stronger than the other. And we saw the heavy distortion on the one channel as well. So that'll be saved for next episode. We'll try and get everything else working. We're going to do a full recap on this thing. It needs it. And then we'll uh, tune, up the, tune up the amplifiers once we get everything working properly. It needs work on the FM. I don't know if you heard, but when I was doing a little bit of testing there, the FM was pretty weak and poor quality. Um, so yeah, it needs some serious help too. I hope it's not any of these uh, IF cans that with the bad mica capacitors. Uh, so we need to do FM work, uh, power amplifier work, and not power, we finished power. We need to do tone amplifier work, and we still need to work on power supply. We don't even know if we have fully functioning power supplies here yet. So uh, I think I covered everything. Um, as far as these transistors go, you can use pretty much any old uh, NPN silicon TO3 transistor that will fit. They're all pretty much rated for what we're working with here. Um, I did measure the rail voltages and it is plus and minus 24 volts. So 48 volts total across both of them. And that's with the load on. And uh, I'm going to work with that. But you could use pretty much any transistor. 2N3055 would be a good substitute. Anything that's going to have a 10 or 15 amp collector current, you know, it's, it's, they're all going to work. And uh, gain, I tried, uh, the gain I used on these transistors were about 3540. Uh, I did have some that were up in around the 225 range, but I'm really hesitant to try them out in this circuit because I think the high gain would upset the balance of these transistors even more than what they're, what they're out. And uh, it would be more difficult to get this, these amplifiers balanced, I think. So I think a lower gain transistor is ideal here. Even though we're going to be uh, sucking more current and wasting power 
with idling idling current so uh, I think that's going to be okay um, yeah so that's it for this one I'm going to let it go and I'll uh, see you on the next one I have lots of stuff coming up I have a Onkyo, a vintage Onkyo integrated amplifier and I have a Marantz integrated amplifier as well so both those coming up pretty soon so stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching see you on the next one take care